Okay, you got the side done. So both sides are planked. I'll do a little bit of sanding on them. Um, next step is to do the, the planking on the transom, but I got to cut all this stuff off first. Get the stone shaped in, a little bit more sanding here to be done. I need to do this side here still, obviously. So I'll get that sanded and come back. Okay, I've read through the instructions here for the transom planking. It starts out with one, three, three, or five thirty-six inch wide plank, and then there's six more um, sixteenth inch wide planks. So it's the side. We need to put this plank on below the gun ports, about a sixteenth of an inch below. I'm going to. Fortunately, these things are sixteenths of an inch, so I can put one across here to mark it out, and then I can go ahead and put my uh, plank on. So I'll get that first plank on, and then I can come back and get the rest of these on. Um, the last one here is probably going to need cut, because it's going to have to go around my uh, stem, the rabbit around the stem post. And I may have to fill that in where I actually sanded it around, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. First, get this thing figured out where it goes. Sixteenth of an inch below the gun port, both sides. Just that far right there. my lines. <clears throat> so that's right where I drew my lines, 16th of an inch below the gun ports. So I can get this first board glued on. I believe I will probably have to, when I put the next one on, have to taper and go to one side so it fits up snug. But I'll get all these glued in place and then come back. Okay, I've already glued this piece on once and ripped it off. It <clears throat> turns out the instructions are not very clear on this. The bottom of this transom piece is curved. The instructions show this going on straight. doesn't mention anything about it being curved. So I ripped it off, curved it, glued it back on, but just in the center. You can see it still does not fit quite right. But since it's just in the center, I can push the transom down, clamp it in place, and glue it with a super glue from the bottom and that will give me my curve I want. So I think that will do it. I need to make sure the transom centered before I clamp it down. Centered being in that it has equal overhang on both sides because this will not get sanded off. There's more wood that goes in front of it to build out. So I'm going to take care of that. It's going to be hard to film so I'll just do it off camera. back we have the transom done this board fit in place it's a lot of back and forth but I said now I need to go ahead and shape the inside of the board before going any further so this one I've already done this time I started I just went through and knocked it down with a dremel just to get it close the next thing I do is I grab my carving tool I forget everything out of my way here and just following along, I just go through and I just start slowly whittling these down until they're pretty close. The other side was easier since I'm right handed, it's easier to get to the other side and do it some, for some reason. But if you just take your time. Nice set of tools. You can get it pretty close to where the final fit's going to be just by hand. One thing I found is if I just go through and get it down at each frame here where it should be. Now 
That makes it easier to just go along and start shaving it this way. Just make sure if you're going to do this, you have some nice sharp tools and don't get your hand in the way. Go back every once in a while, lay your board across it, see how it looks for fair. Over here, you can see it's pretty good. And over here, there's a lot of work to do. But we'll get there, just takes time and patience. I think this side took me a better part of an hour or hour and a half to do. That's between Dremel, carving, and getting other sandpaper and sanding it, going back and forth with the uh, battens here and making sure they fit, especially up in the bow here. And up in the bow here, you can see how thin these frames got. These have been ground and they're nowhere near as thin, so they're going to come. So they're going to come down a lot further. Also, went and ground cut out into the bow um, blocking here, so that the boards can. So that grab one here. These boards will come up and just sort of sit into it like this. So I'm going to get on with doing this carving. Get these things down close so I can sand them. Well, there's a start. I've got it cut down quite a bit with my carving tool. Here's the number five carving tool gouge. Um, getting close. I can, I can, most of this I can just sand in place now. Get it down to where I want it to be. I'll have to thin this down a little bit more. And I'll do a lot more work on the front. But so far, that's what I've carved out of it. Just to bring them down. Keep in mind, every one of these boards on the top was a quarter of an inch thick and they're down pretty narrow now. Get my ruler out here. They were a quarter of an inch thick and now they're down to an eighth of an inch or so. And they have to go a little bit thinner still. The instructions say something like 5 30 seconds is about how thick they should be. Sorry for bumping the camera there. Uh, so I'll just keep on working that down and be back when it's more looking like the starboard side. Okay, so I have this side and this side both shaped. This one needs a little bit more shaping on the front for the inside of the bulwark. And a little bit more on the back. These need to be thinned down to be consistent with the rest of the, the framing here. But I'm going to stop for that for a while, and I'm going to start moving on to the next part of the chapter, chapter 5 I believe, which is add the next two whale strips, a planking strip, a garber strip, and two planking strips on either side. Um, I should be ready to go with this, my sanding, I checked the fits and everything, that seems to be good. I have four pieces of wood here that are 5 three seconds inch wide for the whales. Two eighth inch wide for the planks go below them. One for each side, two for each side. My two garber strips, one for each side, that are three sixteenths inch wide. And four planks, eighth inch wide, two for each side for the, pl the planks above them. And notice some test fits. It does not look like I actually need to soak them to get them into this shape. This wood is pretty soft as it is and you can dent it with your finger. Looks like it'll be able to go right in. I may have to do some edge fitting as I move down, which is tapering the edge of the board so that they butt up next to each other nice and tight. Um, I'll probably have some gaps in the back where the planks meet the transom, but I, there's two things. There's going to be a second layer of planks on top, plus I can fill it because it's all going to be painted black. You'll never see the filler. You shouldn't really see the the planks anyway and then as soon as they get low enough it's going to be coated in copper plate so you'll never be able to see the boards anyway so I'm going to get started on that first thing I need to do I'm going to grab my cutting board and this board needs to be cut so it fits into the uh, rabbit correctly at the correct angle I usually just eyeball this eh, about right there and give it a bit of a back cut as well. That way it can fit in, be at an angle, and come all around. 
Let's get glued in with wood glue again. I'll probably start out just by gluing it like that and then start bending it around and glue it in. So I'll get started with that right now. Grab my glue pot. Grab some more glue. And one thing I do know that since this is double stacked wood here, this first layer of wood can actually go on for the whales only. It can actually be nailed in place if I wanted to. But the glue should be enough. Grab my high tech glue applicator here. And then this board. Can start going on right here. I'm going to heavy in the glue here because there's going to be probably a gap behind it as well. Which means I will have the space once I get enough glue behind it. Yeah, I think I'll just go in like that. One thing I've been doing with these boards at the bows, I've also been going on the back side and super gluing one board to the next. And as always, make sure you clean up the edge to the board below it because if you have glue in there, you're going to have to clean it out anyway. It's easier to clean while it's soft rather than when it's dry. And then along this front edge, you can go ahead and stick it out there. And what I'll do is I'll just glue each rib in, bend it around, clamp it in place, and work one side, then the other side, so that you keep even tension on the frame. Chances of it getting banana shaped right now or curved are slim, but it's always a good practice to be in to do it that way. Also, if I want to, I can also cut this board into halves and make it easier to work with, but I don't think I need to right now. So once this is set, we'll get back and start on the next part. Okay, start on the uh, hole planking. I should say, once you get the whales in place, do three or four more of the eighth inch wide boards. Did one here just to see how it goes. Basically, what I'm going to do now is going to be repeated all the way along here. So I'm going to show really one time and then come back to it when it's done. So I made a planking plan in that. Measured out these three frames have the same number of planks in them. I think it's 22. To the bow, they start narrowing down. To the stern, Strange enough, they narrow down and they widen back out. So that's going to be interesting to plank there. It's going to involve some non prototypical planking, but that's fine because, as I said before, when the whale's down to about the waterline, it's black, painted black, so I can fill all there all day long. You'll never see any planks. Below the black, below the waterline, it's all copper coat plated. So I can fill all that I want and plate with copper. You'll never see the individual planks. So it really doesn't matter what they look like. If you are doing an all natural stain, you'll see the planks and you're going to take a lot more care and fit the planks exactly. Put your steelers in. If you really want to see how to do the steelers on the back, which is where you two planks in become one wide one, go over to Harry Houdini models. When he's building his bounty, he does a really good explanation of doing those steelers in the back. In the meantime, for this plank here, the next one I put on, I went ahead and put it in place, bent it around, figured out where it's going to be, put a mark where the eighth inch width goes away. On the end here, I know about where it's going to go. It's going to be about two, half to two thirds of the width of the board when it's tapered. Marked it out, and then just to make it easier for myself, took the same width boards here, taped them together, so I have one work surface here to work with. 
see if I'm in marks, stick it down the tape. And I can take my cutting piece here. See if the cork will help it stay in place this time. Is everything taped in place? Put on my marks. Grab my X-Acto knife and start cutting through. When you're cutting through, do not try to cut through the entire width thickness of the plank at once. It's, it's, it's going to end up in failure. Right now, I see I'm going to have a problem here is that board's coming out. Flip it over. Put another one of these uh, special blue clamps on here. This is just painter's tape. Put it on there because it doesn't peel anything off with it. So you take it back off. We'll try this again. See if that thing moves on us. Problem is with this board, the cork on the back of this ruler doesn't go all the way to the edge. What I really need is a straight edge that has grippy all the way along. So that should hold it in place very lightly. Just keep going along here. Like I said, you're not trying to cut the whole thing apart in one cut. That will just end in tears. That's about all the way through. My piece is now tapered from somewhere back here to the tip. Although it's a little wider at the tip again. That's fine. Grab some piece of sandpaper. Squeeze it off. Come through and sand it, especially that tip to get the thickness down, the width of the board down. And then so this is going on here. I'm going to go through and give it a bit of an edge set, meaning I'm going to take this back side of the board, this edge of the board, and stand it so it goes down to the back side of the board. So I'm going to hold it on the sanding paper at an angle and get rid of some of the back side. That will give me a tighter seam. So there, this edge is not at an angle. A little bit of tip off still, and with that, I should be able to fit this board in here with a tapered side to the top. That's the way it's going to want to bend anyway, and it should just fit right into that curve. It's not going to be exactly um, flat surface, but that's what sanding's for. This very tip. It needs to have a little notch cut in it. Make my cutting board. Okay, or not. This side's up. Yeah, side's up. I need to cut this thing at a little bit of an angle to fit the bell. That when it goes into that rabbit, it will fit as flush as possible. You need to not only cut it at this angle for the bow, but you need to cut it back so it meets up with the rabbit properly. So when I stick that in, I should be able to bend this around, and that thing will pretty much hold itself in place. I'll go ahead and get this one glued, clamped in place. I'll cut the length, glue clamped in place, and I'll glue this back one in the back. Just needs a piece that's going to be bent on the end to match the, the counter. And it'll come up, I'll cut it to length and glue it in as well. So this whole side, all this planking is going to be the same thing over and over and over. And I can tell you this is probably going to take me better part of a week to do. I'm not going to film it all. I'll come back when it's done. If I 
and then I'll come, then I'll, you Steelers back here, I'll film doing one of those. So I've gone ahead, I have one plank on either side here, all the way around the stern, bent up. I'm not worried about the gaps I'm seeing back here because this can be filled and it's going to be painted black anyway. Never see the gaps. Uh, next thing I'm working on is the tree nails. So I've gone through around every port and up every frame, including the one, the frames between frames that aren't in evidence on the ship itself. Keep in mind for every frame here, there's three frames in between. For these two, ones that are closer, there's one frame in between in real life. So I've drilled all the holes and tree nails there. I'm using toothpicks to fill them in. Um, that's going to be a slow process. Sharp toothpick, glue it in, let it dry, clip it off, lather, rinse, repeat. Uh, after I get that done, then I'll be back to planking the sides of the hole. That's going to take a while. I'm not going to film all that. So for this project, the videos are really going to start slowing down for a bit until I get this planking done. When I get all this planking down and sanded, then we'll come back and we'll start doing uh, the second layer for the whales on the shear plank. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the bulwarks here stained. And we start, I believe we can paint the black for the whales in the shear plank and down to the water line and start the copper. I'll have to follow, follow up with the plans on that one. We also have the fashion pieces around the stern and the transmit all the transfer pieces itself. And then we can move on to doing the planking on the interior. First on the bulkheads, transom bulkheads deck, in that order I believe it is. And there's some framing that goes in here for the hatchway here. So with that, I'll work on that and look for the next video. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a week, two weeks, three weeks on this particular project. But it's going to take me some time just to do all these tree nails. So thank you for watching.